For me, learning to own my gender has been about joy. Given that I wear clothes every day, I deserve to feel joyous when I put them on. The thing that I love about my gender and my expression and the way that I exist in the world is that I break rules from both sides of the camp. I don't shave my body hair. And that's like not in accordance with like femme rules. And I wear heels, which is not in accordance with masculine rules. I've given myself permission to cherry pick what I love from each sort of gender tradition and to create my own tradition mm -hmm. of what feels good on my body, what silhouettes I love, what shapes I love, and how I how I love to adorn myself. Mm -hmm. Like thrifting was was the beginning of my fashion journey. I love that thrift spaces are necessarily more gender creative than retail, mm -hmm. right? Because most retail environments mm -hmm. have are so fucking coded around like, Men, you're supposed yeah. to wear this and you're supposed to wear this. When I was 16 or so, I had this group of friends. It was actually a group of friends from church camp. One of the ways we would like kill time is we'd like go to, go to random thrift stores and buy the silliest things we could. And it was all about fun and play. For me, that's how I first accessed my gender creativity. I actually had permission to try out different things. Mm -hmm. So for example, like, spirit day mm -hmm. and like spirit week in high school those sorts of weird creative playful spaces mm -hmm. were what gave me permission to find my aesthetic and to figure out what I really wanted on my body it was pretty gradual the learning process of claiming my femme in public like I bought my first pair of heels when I was 16 it was scary to go into a women's store to buy them because I thought I might get in trouble mm -hmm. somehow. So I went to the Charlotte Roos with my friend Davis. Like the experience itself, like nothing bad happened to us, mm -hmm. but also like everyone was kind of looking like, what's going on? And then I took them home. I wouldn't wear them anywhere. Mm -hmm. I just had them and would wear them like privately, like, you know, in the kitchen after my parents had gone to bed. It took like a year or so to really take them out in public. And I wore them at like the summer camp that I was at for like a day as a social experiment. What I told myself was I was like, well, my social experiment was successful. Mm -hmm. But what I really felt was like, Oh, fuck, I like this a lot. My closet is super high-low. It's like half of it's like, you know, taffeta designer ball gowns that like were gifted to me. I don't even know what they retail for, mm -hmm. but I know it's like a thousand dollars or higher. Literally next to like a ball gown that I got for seven dollars or eight seven ninety nine right. at the Goodwill. I love my clothes. Like most of my stuff has story to it. Mm -hmm. And I remember almost where I got almost everything. Mm -hmm. Although every now and then there were weird exceptions. Like I can't remember where I got these camo shorts. For me, this is like sort of kinky, extravagant, mm -hmm. like faggy perfection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because it's like you have like the little short short that like keep it like real. Mm -hmm. Like A, it's like sexy because you're like showing a lot of skin. But B, mm -hmm. it's also like don't forget that I'm not like a butch stud. Like femme cutie little, you know, little right. vibes. This t-shirt is an I Heart Beijing shirt. My friend from middle school slash high school went to Beijing for like a study away program or something and came back with this for me because she loves me and she knows me. Clearly the people who make the t-shirt are in on the joke. And then I have this little leather cuff, which I literally found on the ground. And I was like, yes, thank you, leather gods. Yeah. This was originally a full leather trench coat. I cut it up to make it this like weird Batman edgy, like inverted Batman tails, Real like fun. like edgy crop top in the back like leather whatever and this collar is from my friend Nat in Chicago uh -huh. who makes custom glitter vinyl kink gear and then she also gave me <laughs> this little beanie baby that she put in a little harness right now she's in boho Palm Springs grandma chic this is a lovely little like floral pantaloon one of my friends in college was a serial hoarder slash thrifter and she was also like six feet tall and had like a rib cage so like we're basically the same size and everything and she was getting rid of like big garbage bags mm -hmm. of clothes and so she gave me these pants among like a number of other things that are in my wardrobe this jacket sparks just like too much joy like it's the kind of jacket where I would if I wore it to an event when I wear it to an event I'm gonna be distracted all night cuz I'm just gonna be like oh my gosh these things are so special they're from my friend Brian Belovich who lived as a trans woman named Tish Gervais Tish was a, an iconic performer and then Brian made the choice to retransition um, and sort of live more as like a genderqueer gay dude. They gave me these earrings because they were like, they're from my Tish days and I thought mm. you'd do them justice. Aww. So, you know, they have like some like beautiful like 1970s, 1980s trans magic in mm. them. I don't even know what you'd call this look. Mm -hmm. Like, is it masculine? Is it feminine? Like, mm -hmm. where does it land? Because it's like, well, it's a suit, but it's with heels. Mm -hmm. And the clip on earrings, I guess, fem it up. And certainly the makeup does. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, it, what, what tradition is this following in? Mm -hmm. Initially, high heels were all about my agency my ability to 
claim and own my gender in a way that felt really good for me. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, as my career's going on, I'm starting to face some of the challenges that lots of cis women face, which is that high heels become an obligation. Red carpet better wear a high heel. Oh, well, with that dress, you need to wear heels because the train, like, it just demands it. And I'm starting to realize, like, uh uh-oh, did I I just, like, crawl into another trap? After my book tour, or mid my book tour, I was, like, really, really, really tired. Mm -hmm. And my body was, like, a wreck just because I was on a plane every single day. And I was, like, wearing cute shoes to all my events. And I came home to LA and I had literally like 12 hours or 15 hours in LA between when I landed and when I flew back to New York to do the Daily Show. But I had a book event that night. So I like came home, unpacked my first suitcase, had to repack for the second leg of my book tour. You know, by the time I was actually getting dressed, I didn't even have time for a proper nap. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, my back is about to explode. I'm wearing cowboy boots to this event Mm -hmm. tonight. My new sort of discovery is that like my cowgirl boots are actually my power move for like when I'm meeting with people because there's something about showing up in like a sleek outfit, Mm -hmm. you know, and like a badass put together high femme look, face done, looking incredible in like cowgirl boots. They have this this super masculine edge to them, Mm -hmm. but they're also really femme, but they're not trying hard, but they're also asserting like a power. When I first moved to New York, I couldn't afford anything in there, but I was like, I'm just gonna like go to like Bergdorf, Goodman, Mm -hmm. you know, or like Barney's, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be fun to like, let's at least go window shopping. And then I was like, I'm having no fun because like all these customers are hella judgy. Why are you in this space? This space isn't for you. It's not like I'm boycotting retail spaces until they improve, but I'm just like, why would I shop somewhere that doesn't inspire me? Why would I shop somewhere that feels dumb? Where like the construction of the artifice is everything Mm -hmm. and the actual like beautiful thing you're buying and the substance isn't there. I don't think we've won if we create some gender neutral world in which there is no gender. I think we only win if we create a world that is just filled to the brim. Where every kind of expression is appreciated in its own right. Every type of expression is adored and celebrated. In my dream world, gender is just like a really good vintage store. There's so many different shapes and cuts and silhouettes. There are a million different fabrics and textures. The space doesn't suggest what is right and what isn't what Mm -hmm. you're allowed to wear and what you can't, what's proper and what's not, what's fashionable and what's not. Mm -hmm. Like everything is free reign and you get the ability to fully experiment and explore. I'm the Marie Kondo of gender. I want to walk through everybody's metaphorical gender house and be like, hold all these different aspects of your identity to Mm -hmm. your chest. Decide if they spark joy for you. Mm -hmm. If they spark joy, I'll teach you how to fold them and keep them and store them nicely Mm -hmm. and honor them and display them how you want. And if they don't spark joy, like get rid of it.